Welcome to the video presentation of the Senior Graduation Information Workshop. My name is Cindy Clark. I am the Assistant Registrar of Student Services here at Ithaca College, and I work for the Office of the Registrar. One of my main jobs is to make sure that you graduate on time. You also might see my name on your degree evaluation and degree works. I process all the course waiver substitutions that might come through for you. I also process forms like change of majors and minors, change of expected graduation date, changes in your catalog year. I answer all degree works questions. I answer the my degree email. I also am on the commencement committee and I maintain the marching order account, which we'll talk about later in this presentation. I help develop the content for the commencement program as well. So the office of the registrar has moved. We were on the second floor of the Peggy Ryan Williams building, but now we are located on the main floor right behind admissions. Our office hours are Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Fridays from 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. On Wednesdays, we open at 10 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. You can contact me anytime. And on the last slide of this presentation, I will have all the contact information for you. We have a lot to go over, but part of what we're going to go over is your degree requirements because I want to make sure you're ready to graduate. Your application for degree, Latin honors, commencement program, registering for commencement, the graduation fair, and what if you take courses outside of Ithaca in your final semester and how that works. And I want to make sure you have all your credits to graduate. We have a lot to go over, so we're going to start right now. The first thing I want to go over, and only two slides on this, is your degree evaluation. We want to make sure that you generate a degree evaluation every time you make a change to your academic record, so like changing your major, minor, or receiving grades. Now, on your degree evaluation, the block here is your main header block. And for this purpose of this presentation, I want to make sure you're looking at your graduation date. Everything I do is based off of your graduation date. So make sure that date is correct. If it is not, you want to change it. There's a form in IC workflow called change of graduation date. Make sure you change it so you receive a time ticket in order to register for future semesters. The next block I want to go over has a lot of information on it. This is called your degree block. In this case, the degree is a bachelor's of science. If you're a graduate student, It'll say Master's of Science or Doctor of Physical Therapy on it. On the left-hand column for undergraduate students, you will see you have a liberal arts section. In this case, a Bachelor's of Science degree means 60 liberal arts credits. If you're a Bachelor's of Arts student, you need 90 liberal arts credits. A Bachelor's of Fine Arts and a Bachelor's of Music both need 30 liberal arts credits. This pertains to only undergraduate students. Then you have the minimum number of credits required for your degree. For all students, except for graduate students and bachelors of music, this will be 120 credits if you're seeking one degree. It'll be 150 credits if you're seeking two degrees. Bachelor of music students, this might say 120, but for some of your programs, there are a little bit more than 120. And for graduate students, this will be whatever your program requires the number of minimum credits. Now, these minimum credits are credits that you have to earn or you have to receive a grade for. You cannot see earned credits on your degree evaluation. To see earned credits, you're going to go to Homer Connect and you can see it there or you can see it on your unofficial transcript. For undergraduate students, all students need to receive or have a minimum of 48 credits taken here at Ithaca College. You have to have a minimum GPA of a 2.0. You cannot, and this goes for graduate students as well, you cannot have no grades submitted, which we call an NGS. You must receive grades for every course you've taken. You cannot have an incomplete. For undergraduate students, you must complete all of your ICC work. You also must complete 50% of your major 
has to be taken here at Ithaca College. So you have to complete all the major requirements and minor requirements. If you're not going to complete a minor requirement, you need to drop it. You cannot graduate with an incomplete minor. And to see that form, that's also an IC workflow. For undergraduate students, the ePortfolio is now checked off in your degree evaluation. The remainder of your ePortfolio will be completed in your capstone course. And then in the center section of this screenshot, you will, it will tell you how many more credits you have to register for in order to graduate with the minimum required number of credits. Now where you see on the right hand side, it says 119 and a half credits applied. Those are credits you are not only earned, but credits you are also registered for. So they're all added together. That is not earned credits, that is credits that is earned plus credits you are registered for. Again, to see credits earned, go to your unofficial transcript or right into Homer Connect. And also on the screen, it shows you your catalog year. All of your requirements are based on what's in your catalog year. Also on your degree um, evaluation, for December graduates right now, you should have everything in progress. That's the blue tilde or the green check mark. Green check mark means you've received a grade for it and that requirement's complete. The blue tilde means that every your course is in progress. So for December graduates, if you have a blank box right now, you need to go see your major or minor advisor, depending on what your issue is. For May graduates, the same is going to be true for you in the spring semester. Everything should have a blue tilde, which is in progress, or a green check mark. If you don't, you may need one of those course waiver substitution forms. If you need that, students do not submit those, but your advisor can. So that's why you have to go see your advisor. You can also follow up with me and I'd be more than happy to help you um, figure out what the issue is. Now we're moving on to the application for degree. The application for degree tells me how you want your name to be displayed on your diploma and where to mail it to. But in order to apply for your degree, you have to earn, have earned 85 earned credits in order to apply. You apply in Homer Connect. In September, I will send you an invitation to apply for your degree. The deadline for December graduates is approaching soon. September 14th. For May graduates, it's going to be November 16th. Before you apply, make sure that graduation date is correct. Make sure your minor is correct. Make sure all your um, majors are correct as well. You um, will only be contacted if, once you apply, you'll only be contacted if there's a problem with your application. I don't contact you if there's no problem. When you go to fill out your diploma name, you can put your first, middle, and last name. If you're going to use a middle initial, please put a period after your initial. If you're going to enter a suffix, like the third, junior, senior, then that, under junior and senior, put a period after that. Do not use miss or mister as a suffix. You do not want your name to be Mr. John Robert Smith. You want it to be John Robert Smith. Or if you have a correct suffix, John Robert Smith Jr. And then you're going to enter your address. Now your address is going to be someplace where you're going to be when I mail your diplomas. For December graduates, I'm going to mail your diplomas at the end of January to early February. So make sure it's somebody's going to be where you have you put your address in for. Same with for May graduates. I'm going to mail those late June, early July. Do not put a campus address because if you're not going to be there, you won't get your diploma. When you apply for your degree, if you want to know if you've already applied, under Homer in Homer Connect under graduation information you will see it'll say active one or active two if you have two majors. 
Now, if you have two majors, you have to apply for both of those majors. And please do them in the order that your majors come up. If you have two majors and two different degrees, you also apply, apply twice. So once you see the graduation information, it says active one, that means you've applied. When you click on that, you'll be able to see all of the information you input on your application for a degree. If any of that information needs to change, you have to contact me because our office is the only office that can change that information. Again, your diploma for December will be mailed late January to early February, and for May, it'll be late June to early July. I want to go over one degree versus two degrees. This can be a little confusing for students. One degree, if you have one major with or without a minor, you're gonna receive one degree. If you have two majors in the same degree program with or without a minor, the minimum number of earned credits is 120 and you're gonna receive one diploma. So two majors in the same degree program equals one diploma. Now, if you're taking two majors in two different degree programs, you're going to receive two diplomas. So two majors, with or without a minor, you're gonna to have to earn 150 earned credits. You're gonna receive two diplomas, one for each degree type. If you have any questions on this, please contact me and I'd be more than happy to help you figure this out. So we went over a lot about your degree requirements. I just want to recap here. You need to complete all your major, minor, ICC degree requirements. You got to make sure you have that green check mark. If you don't have the green check mark, you are not going to graduate. You want to earn 120 credits, a minimum of 120 credits for one degree and a minimum of 150 credits for two degrees. If you're a graduate student, you want to um, earn the minimum required credits for your program. For undergraduate students, the minimum number of credits that you can take, that you have to take is 48 credits here at Ithaca College. And remember, 50% of your major has to be completed here at Ithaca College. You cannot graduate without a grade. All grades must be submitted. You cannot graduate if there's uh, an incomplete. You must have an incomplete and you must have a minimum GPA of a 2.0, and you must complete all your liberal arts credits. Now we're gonna move on to Latin honors. So Latin honors has two requirements, and this is for undergraduate students only. Latin honors, you must have earned credits of 60, and you must have a certain GPA. Latin Honors is the highest distinction you can receive from Ithaca College. So for commencement only, by February 1st, for May graduates, we take what your earned credits are and what your GPA is at that time. That's for commencement only. So that means your honor cords and what's listed in the commencement program. And we do not uh, round up, we truncate the number. For December graduates, it's October 1st. So by October 1st, whatever your earned credits are and whatever your GPA is, is what your Latin honors is going to be based off for commencement only so that your honor cords and what's in the program. Now at the very end, in your final semester, after all grades have been posted, it will have your final GPA factored into what your actual Latin honors is. It could go up and sometimes it can go down. So you don't want to slack off in your final semester. So your diploma and transcript will have what your accurate Latin honor is. It will, you also must still have 60 earned credits. And again, we don't do any rounding. So your diploma, if you've earned a cum laude, will have cum laude on it. Your transcript will also have cum laude. So for commencement, you might not have had cum laude, but on your diploma and transcript, if you've earned it, you will receive it. 
So cum laude is a blue honor core. It's a 3.5 to a 3.699. Magna cum laude is a gold honor core. It's a 3.7 to a 3.899. And summa cum laude, the very highest honor, is blue and gold honor core, and it, you must receive a 3.9 or above. Again, this is the highest distinction of honors. So if you receive an email from me that you've received Latin honors, this is a free honor core. You do not pay for this but you've earned the highest distinction here at Ithaca College. So let's talk about what's on your diploma. On your diploma will be the name as you listed it in your application for degree. It will have your type of degree and it will have your Latin honor if you've received one. So the types of degrees we have are Bachelor's of Science, Bachelor's of Art, Bachelor's of Music, Bachelor's of Fine Arts, Master's of Science, and Doctor of Physical Therapy. Those are our current types of degree. And again, Latin honors, if applicable. It'll also have your conferral date. That is the date your degree will be awarded with. It'll have the provost signature and the president's signature. We do not put majors or minors on diplomas. Majors and minors will be on your transcript. Your transcript is your actual official document that'll have majors, minors, your type of degrees, your institutional honors, your Latin honors, and your dean's list. So if you've got a parks, if you're a park scholar, that'll also be listed on your transcript. And that would be under institutional honors. Now let's talk about commencement. So you've applied for your degree. Now you have to register to walk at the commencement. They are two separate processes. One actually has nothing to do with the other. For December, the hooding and commencement ceremony is one ceremony and that's on December 11th of 2022 at 10 a.m. at the A&E Center. The May graduate hooding is May 20th, 2023. And the commencement for May is May 21st, 2023. Now for May commencement, we offer everyone who's graduated from December of 2022 right through December of 2023. They are welcome to attend the May 2023 commencement. And the reason we allow both December graduates to come is because some students might graduate a semester early. Other students might graduate a semester later. So we want everyone to walk with their friends. Now, as I mentioned before, we use a third party vendor called Marching Order. This is a vendor that we use for you to register to walk at commencement. When you receive the email to walk at commencement, you will be asked to create an account for marching order. You're going to create your account. You're going to log in. You're going to tell us, do I want to attend commencement or do I not want to attend commencement? If you don't want to attend commencement, you just say no and you're done. If you want to attend commencement, you say yes, and then you'll get a bunch of more information to fill in. So one of those things is how you want your name pronounced. Because when you walk across the stage, we want your name pronounced correctly you will be able to create a thank you slide. You can add a picture. You do not have to create the thank you slide and you do not have to submit a picture. That is optional. Now we'll, we will have dates and deadlines for you to follow. I urge you to make sure you submit this application to walk across the stage to register by the deadline. We cannot add you to the commencement list if you do not do it by the deadline because we're using that third party vendor. Because after we have that deadline, all the information goes out to them, they do their processing, and then it comes back to us completed. So when we say there's a deadline, you must follow the deadline. You are going to receive a lot of emails in your final semester. We know it's a lot of emails. It's our really our only way, main way to contact you. So please read those emails and read them thoroughly. 
It will have all the information that you need. If you need more information, I am here to help you. So contact me and I'd be more than happy to help. But please, please, I beg of you, go by your deadline date. Do not try to submit it afterwards because the very slim chances will be able to help you. Once that deadline has passed, we will go ahead and give everyone something called a grad pass. We're going to assign that. So this is for the hooding. This is for December and May graduates. Everyone gets a grad pass. What is a grad pass? Well, a grad pass is your access into commencement or your hooding ceremony. It's got a barcode on it. We scan it. You're going to check in with it. You're going to go line up. And then when you walk across the stage, you're going to have that scanned again. And that's what's going to tell us who you are as you're walking across the stage. So it's very important that everyone lines up and stays lined up correctly. Otherwise, the wrong name would be associated with the person walking across the stage. So you want to make sure when you line up at commencement, you line up and stay in line. Now, last year, we were told students could take this grad pass and download it to the phone. So we told students to do that. However, it became very odd when students had to didn't have a pocket to put their phone in. Like, where do I put my phone? So what we've learned, and we suggest that you print your graduation pass, because once you scan it right before you walk stage, you give it to us, you're done, you don't have to worry about it. You just got to make sure you show up to graduation with this grad pass. Now for May commencement, and this is May only, you will also have the opportunity to download guest passes. You will receive information on how to do this. Your guest pass, you can forward on to your supporter who's there for you. You will need to be in cap and gown at commencement for December, graduates only. You will purchase your cap and gown through the bookstore website. For May graduates and the hooding, May hooding, you will purchase your cap and gown directly from Oak Hall. They will mail it to you. Now for December graduates, you can pick it up in the bookstore or you can opt to have it mailed to you. For Latin Honor Cord distribution, for December graduates, you will pick it up in the Office of the Registrar. Again, you will receive an email inviting you to come get your Honor Cord. For May graduates, we are going, we're still in the process of figuring out how this will work. So you, more information on this will be forthcoming. For the commencement program, in the commencement program, it's going to have your diploma name as you put on your application for degree. It'll have your major, the type of degree that you earned, your Latin honors at that time if you've earned it, and your hometown city and state. Your hometown city and state is based on your permanent address. So if your city and state is different than your permanent address, only if it's different, you're going to complete the hometown change of address form. This form needs to be completed by February 1st for the May commencement, and it must be completed by October 1st for December commencement. Again, you're only going to complete this form if your permanent address is different than your hometown, city, and state. Now, last year, we started a commemorative program that you can purchase. So it could have your name in it and it could have certain pictures of you in it. It's, and it's um, geared just for you. Or for purchase, we have just regular programs. Otherwise, they are a PDF of the commencement. Graduation fair. In March, on March 21st in Emerson Suites, from 10 to 2, we're going to have a graduation fair. At the graduation fair, you can complete your marching order registration. You can purchase senior week tickets. There's going to be area vendors, information on parking. You can see and touch and feel your cap and gown. And the registrar's office will be there. So if you have any questions on your degree evaluation, you can um, find us and we'd be more than happy to help. So save that date, March 21st in Emerson Suites from 10 to 2. 
Now, what if I took a class outside of Ithaca in my final semester? What do I do? If you took a class at just another institution, you got to make sure you complete a petition for transfer credit for each course that you've taken. Our college needs an official transcript from the outside institution, not from you, but from the institution. So the deadline for December graduates to get us that official transcript is January 20th of 2023. And for May graduates, it's June 9th of 2023. The fastest way to send us a transcript is as a PDF from the other institution. And you can have that sent to registrar at ithaca.edu. Now, if you're taking courses at the LA or at the London Center, you do not need a petition for transfer credit because they're part of Ithaca College. If you take courses at Cornell through IC, you only need to send us the official transcript from Cornell. You will receive directions on how to do that. And you have to go by the above deadline date. If you take courses that are an affiliated study abroad program, you only need a study abroad credit approval form that is located on the international programs website if they want the course to apply to a specific requirement. So if you want that course for a specific requirement, you're going to complete that form. If you take courses at a non-affiliated study abroad program, that means you've taken a leave of absence for the semester. So you need a study abroad approval credit form for each course that you are bringing into Ithaca. And what if you're short credits? Can you still participate in commencement? Yes, you can, because remember, we're taking everyone from December 2022 through December of 2023. You know, maybe something happened. You had to withdraw from a class. You had to drop a class. You just don't have enough credits. But please, change your expected graduation date because you want to receive a time ticket so you can register for future semesters. Don't forget to do that. And finally, I want to give a shout out to our Career Services Office. They're located in Muller Faculty Center. They're a great resource. You should use them. You can get connections with alumni. You can, they can help you with your resume, interviewing, cover letters. This is a great resource for you to use. So please go check them out. And finally, here is our contact information that I promised you. So you can reach me at 607-274-1012. I'm at cclark9 at ithaca.edu. Our office number is 607-274-3127. If you have general questions, you can email registrar at ithaca.edu. If you have questions on your degree evaluation and degree works, I can answer that at mydegree at ithaca.edu. And again, our walk-in office hours are Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, starting at 8.30 a.m. and we close at 4.30 p.m. And on Wednesdays, it's 10 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Thank you so much for listening to this video presentation. I hope you feel that it helped you. And again, I am here for you. If you have any questions, please come and see me, contact me. We can make um, a meeting, whatever you need. I am here to help you graduate. Have a great day. Thanks.